Florida's River of Grass, the Everglades, Part 1, The Geography and Ecology of the Everglades. The Florida Everglades, also known as Florida's River of Grass, is located in southern Florida and covers an area of roughly 1,542,526 acres, or 6,642 square kilometers. It is currently the 10th biggest national park in the U.S. The Everglades have a unique formation, as underneath the shallow water lies limestone. The limestone is relatively old, around 15 million years old, but the fully formed Everglades area itself is only 5,000 years old. The Everglades started developing its form about 15,000 years ago, when water from oceans rose and covered the limestone at the surface of the area. The water made holes in the limestone, and additional rainfall eroded the limestone as well. The erosions, differing in size, created different shapes and sizes of holes, such as sloughs, ponds, and dips. Besides the holes visible above water, there are aquifers, pools of water in the limestone, about 30 to 100 feet below the surface of the limestone. Another unique feature of the Everglades is the circulation of water in it. Water from Lake Okeechobee is present in virtually every part of the Everglades, and it flows out through small streams and rivers to the ocean, most notably to the Gulf of Mexico. The speed of the flow is extremely slow, less than a meter per minute. The Everglades also gets its water from rainfall. Lake Okeechobee, in turn, gets its water from rainfall as well. Since the Everglades do not drain a lot of water from the lake, and the lake can gather a lot of water from the rainfall, Lake Okeechobee does not lose a lot of water due to the Everglades. The structure of the Everglades, while not as astounding as the structure of some other parks, is, in its own way, astounding. The hardly noticeable minute hills of the Everglades, which can sometimes go up to 10 feet in height, are the Floridian equivalents of mountains. They were formed when clumps of little organisms called bryozoans were exposed to direct sunlight, causing them to dry out and harden into limestone. That limestone provides habitat for types of plants that cannot survive with their roots underwater. There are five different types of ecosystems in the Everglades. They are characterized by their height off of water level and by the type of vegetation that grows there. The first type of ecosystem is the hardwood hammock. Hardwood hammocks are islands of dirt and sediment centimeters higher than water level. Vegetation in hardwood hammocks is made up of trees, palmettos, shrubs, bushes, moss, and grass. The second type of ecosystem is the freshwater swamp. Freshwater swamps primarily support vegetation that can be partially submerged underwater, such as mangroves, cypresses, grass, and ferns. The third type of ecosystem is the sawgrass marsh ecosystem. It appears several centimeters underwater and is home to sawgrass. The fourth ecosystem is the wet prairie ecosystem, also several centimeters underwater, but home to mostly lily pads instead of sawgrass. The last ecosystem is the pond or slough ecosystem. This ecosystem is the deepest of the ecosystems in the Everglades and can sometimes be as deep as seven feet. It is home to lily pads and algae. The Everglades ecosystems depend on two large factors, rain and fire. Those two factors come and go in a cycle every year. When one is present, the other is not, and vice versa. The fire cycle in the Everglades occurs during dry period every year. The fire wipes out only the tops of grass growing in the water, allowing the roots to sprout new grass. This also happens with palmettos and hardwood hammocks. The leftover ash eventually turns into compost for other plants to grow in the area. Because the climate of the Everglades is so tropical, the plants that live there got there from a tropical place as well. Exactly how the plants currently in the Everglades got there is unknown, but scientists believe that seeds were brought over from places like the Caribbean by birds. When Florida first joined the continent of North America, it had no plants. Birds transported the seeds to the area, and some plants, such as mangroves, spread via vines. The plants adapted to the new climate, and new animals also entered the area. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, if you liked it, you can click the like button, maybe even favorite the video, and if you subscribe, that would also be awesome. Also, this is just one of three videos that I'm going to make about the Everglades, 
So if you want to see the other two videos, check back once in a while because I will post the next videos as soon as I can.